morning, everybody. This is Al Stefanel. You are listening to Boquete Now Talk Radio on Radio Cherokee 103.3 FM. And you can also listen live on RadioCherokee.com. And you can download the free Radio Garden app. All you got to do is uh, go to the search box, put in Radio Cherokee 103.3, hit that little favorite button, and you can listen crystal clear all the time. Uh, we are sponsored by Big Daddy's Grill, Boulder 54, and the Tap Out Sport Zone. Three wonderful places to eat and to hang out. We are, uh, we have special guests today in the outdoor studio. We have Dee Horn and Justin from Tap Out. We're going to talk Hello, all everybody. about the Tuesday market. I know everybody's been asking a lot of questions and wondering what's going on. Well, here is where you're going to get the lowdown, the nitty gritty, and every piece of information you could possibly want about the Tuesday market. Before we go on, uh, I want to touch a little bit on the latest communication from Minsa, as we do every Friday. Minsa works on, is working on a call for health personnel, for more health personnel to care for uh, hospital adjustments for patients with COVID-19. The Ministry of Health works on the call for recruitment of suitable health personnel. They're trying to get more people in here and the adaptation of various rooms in the network of public hospitals for the care required by those who are suffering with the coronavirus. The call is advanced based on legal requirements in order to comply with the corresponding terms to meet these requirements and always complying with the provisions of the national emergency. Uh, Minsa has already advanced with the architectural plan and details so that the wards of the different hospitals in the public network are ready to receive patients and uh, for both COVID-19 and other pathologies. Uh, public and network hospitals are being managed through the Inter-Hospital Control Center in order to achieve a more effective performance that allows each patient, patient to be received and cared for. The center monitors beds, medications, equipment, and other supplies in order to respond to the need of each person who is affected by the effects of this pandemic and other diseases. Now, the Vice Minister of Health, Yvette Berno, Bero, excuse me, visited uh, Nicholas Salerno Hospital yesterday in order to know what the conditions are of this uh, new medical center and to verify the progress of two wards that will be enabled to serve the population of Panama West, one of the most affected areas by COVID-19. The health minister, Luis Sucre, uh, together with the Social Security Fund at CSS, um, have also implemented the Inter-Hospital Coordination Strategy, whose objective is to guarantee the adequate administration of resources at the national level through the Inter-Hospital Control Center. This strategy is to improve the install capacity and that no patient is left without the care that is required both in Panama West and in the rest of the country. In the case of the Darien, the installation of a mobile hospital in the province has been arranged for patient care which has a capacity of 20 beds. The latest epidemiological, I said that right, the latest epidemiological report is there are 5,528,165 people that have recovered, how's that for some good news throughout the world, uh, there are uh, 10 million seven hundred and something thousand thousand accumulated positive cases and 517,000 deaths. Now the mortality rate worldwide is at 4.8, but in Panama, we have 16,445 recovered patients. Yes, there were 774 new positive cases for a total of 35,237. To date, they have applied 2,000, as of yesterday, for yesterday rather, 2,352 tests. And the positivity rate is at 33%. Uh, and 22 new deaths as well. However, our mortality rate is still below 2%. So hang in there, people, because, uh, you know, we're getting it done. There are uh, 17,181 people that are in home isolation. They're not in the hospital. They're recovering at home. And uh, there are 944 people uh, in the, uh, the ward in the hospital, 149 in ICU. So that, <clears throat> that pretty much rounds up what's been going on. Um, we want to welcome to our show D Horn and Mr. Justin from uh, Tap Out and from the, the, the. Tuesday market. Tuesday market. Welcome to the show. <laughs> so, I know that you brought some you, know, you brought some talking points with you, which we we're going to definitely get to right away. Um, there's been a little I, w I don't want to say confusion, but people have been asking questions about the posts that you have made on uh, social networking. So, from the source, tell us what's going on with the new market. 
Well, I want to first start with the history of the Tuesday Market. Great. Yeah, it started way back when at uh, Panamonte Hotel. It was a speech group, uh -huh. and uh, it they decided to bring in a couple of people to sell some things while where they had the speakers mm -hmm. at the Panamonte Bar. That got a little too crowded, so they moved over to the Fundadores Hotel. Mm -hmm. And that went for a while, and through the generosity of uh, Anna Yancey, mm -hmm. who actually owns the building, which was originally called Snoopy's. Yeah, people it still refer to it as Snoopy's. Still, the Panamanians, <laughs> if you want to tell them where it is, you tell them to, it's at Snoopy's. <laughs> in the Snoopy's building, they built in the theater. Through the generosity of volunteers, they put together that theater mm -hmm. and set that all up. And they, when I came here 10 years ago, that market was pretty small. Mm -hmm. There was in the hex room, which is the room in the middle where the bar is for the restaurant, there was just a couple of tables where you could sit and talk to sure, people. Yeah. It was a very nice, mellow market. And with time, they continued to accrue more and more vendors. And luckily in the past year, through the generosity of the management of Tap Out, the building has been majorly improved oh, yeah. and much more comfortable to work in. But because of some lease issues, things have changed. Mm -hmm. And we as vendors really like this facility. We want to stay at the facility because we feel it's meeting our needs. Sure. So when we were told by the management of the market previously that we were no longer welcome at the uh, tap out, um, we decided to come together as vendors and we decided we wanted to be in charge of how the market was run. Mm -hmm. So we are just vendors selling our wares in the original building, the tap out building. And we are not for profit. We are not trying to get, make money from having the vendors there. We are just paying our rent and our costs and you can come and support us by visiting every Tuesday like you have in the past. You're probably going to see most of your favorite vendors there. We're going to have a new vibe. Mm. We're going to have a real chill market. We're going to have some space for people to sit and have a cup of coffee, eat some of that wonderful food that's brought in by all those different vendors. We want an international market from, we have Ukrainians, we have Germans, we have French, we have all kinds of different food varieties that are available. So we want people to not feel so crowded sure. and rushed. A lot of people, I heard so many complaints, people say, I don't want to spend any time at the market, I just want to get my veggies and get the hell out. Right, yeah. We don't want that anymore. We want this to be a community center, a community gathering, so that people can come and see friends that they only get to see once a week. Have time to, to just sit down and hopefully listen to some live music and not stand in front of the tables of the vendors blocking the view of the wares because there's no place for anybody to stand. So when, 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 the, uh, when the health department, when Minsa, you know, finally allows um, these establishments to open up, I would assume that you guys are going to be uh, observing like social distancing. You're going to have space between the tables. Is that what you mean by being Ex more accessible? Exactly. We want, we have, that's part of the rules is that we do need the social distancing, but we would have that anyway. Sure. Because we don't want, oh, there's an inch in a corner over there. Let's put a table. We right. don't want that. We don't have to do that because we're not making any money off of 
the spaces. The spaces right. are just there for us to rent. Right. 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 So what, what we're going to do is um, we now have a confirmation from the Rotary that they are going to be running the morning talks oh, in the yeah. theater. I wanted to ask, since you are the official market um, historian, <laughs> you had mentioned uh, when you started uh, telling us the history that it started at the Panamonte as, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't have coronavirus, everybody, by the way. I smoke too much, so I have a smoker's cough. And if you see me smoking on Line of Peru, don't give me that stink eye. Anyway. Um, <laughs> no, I cough in Line of Peru. <laughs> um, you mentioned that there were speakers, right, right. at the Panamonte. Right. Is the, are the Tuesday talks, the, the, those, the, yes. is that kind of, a, of an expansion of, of what you originally started? Yes, that's what that came from. That's very interesting. Right. And so we um, are going to let the Rotary take that over, and who they decide to bring in for the talks is going to be up to them. But the them. if they charge a fee, which they might, it will be going to benefit the Rotary Club, yeah. and which will ultimately benefit yeah. Boquete. Well, it's usually a dollar or two. Usually you know? a dollar and, and admission. I, don't, I can't speak for them, but yeah. they're really excited that they're going to be able to take on this adventure and, and try and, and have this accessible for all the different... Uh, Bocatanians? Bocatanos. 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 Um, so we're, we're just really excited about that. What I was also mentioning about the music is that we really want to take advantage of the fabulous stage that Tap Out has put in there. And they yeah. have. Isn't that beautiful? It's some a some really some really stage. really awesome guy actually consulted on that. I don't know who he is, but it turned out really nice. Yeah, and the basketball. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let me throw this over to you, Justin, because I mean, I I played live music at at Tap Out. Yeah, that's true. Um, and and the the, the way it's set up is great. You know, it really is, especially during the times of the year when we have the Bahareki. It's better or now it's, because we have a dance floor. I was going to ask you because dance floor in, and like a week later we had to shut down due to coronavirus. Yeah, because see, the last time I was, the last time I was there, it was, I noticed that there was uh, the beginning of something going on there, right out in front of the stage. So you have a dance floor there. Dance floor. Ooh, yeah. Maybe twenty people, twenty-five people. Yeah. It's nice. And uh, so that's that's where you're going to want to have uh, just some acoustic. Right, some soft background music so that people can sit at the benches and chairs and just enjoy this community gathering. Again, we, we all know that there is going to be another market mm -hmm. that's going to be across the street at the Feria. Mm -hmm. And there's also an artisan market across the street from us. And we really feel that there is room for everyone. Sure. It's not a competition, it's a community gathering, a market day. Yeah. It's like the big Mercado we have right across from Romero. It's not a competition thing for those guys. Right. They all get the same vegetables pretty much from the same people and they and they sell them. And you choose your favorite vendor right. or favorite side of the market. It's going to be the same thing. If you have a certain vendor that you like, you go to that market and visit that vendor. If that vendor is across the street, you go across the street. Yeah. It's not an expansion of the Tuesday market. But, but explain that the because I know I know what it means, but let every let's let everyone know well, about the Tuesday when, market. When the vendors came together, the core of vendors, which um, are people that decided to volunteer their time to get this started we threw around what the names could be and some of them like some people said well why don't we call it the gringo market because that's what everybody calls it and I said that's yeah, that's not a very yeah, good that's yeah. not a good name but I said you know everybody just calls it the Tuesday market yeah that's what we've always called it and it's the same market it isn't going to be different except improved so we decided to slap on that capital V uh -huh. so everybody knows it's that original market it's the original market interesting so Justin um, 
have you have you any idea from I know, I'm not a merchant I don't own you know a, a store here so all I know about uh, the, the the progress that Mensa is making is what comes off what comes over my my newswire do you have any uh, any further any further information about maybe when tap out and well, all the other out, places might be allowed to open tap out is clearly going to be in block four with the rest okay. of the restaurants great, and the hotels great, great, great. and the and the and the tourism industry the interesting thing about the market is nobody is really sure under which category under which block they're going to fit right there's an argument that can be made that the market should be treated uh, the same as the municipal market, which has been open the whole time. Right. There's an argument that can be made that they would be under large n unnecessary gatherings in Block 6. So right. really, we don't know. I do have a meeting this Saturday with somebody from Minsa. Mm. I'm going to uh, walk him through the space, show him around. I have a plan of the uh, panel mm -hmm. of the area and talk about distancing and find out what we have to do to open sooner rather than later. So well, I don't know. I don't know, but I am hoping, especially as it seems as if the government in Panama is going to start treating uh, districts and. Well, I've been, you know, I've been to that bit. market, uh, the Mercado, the big market, and I've noticed that, yeah, you can you buy your fruits and vegetables, but all the vendors also sell other products along with their food so it would make sense to me uh you know in my limited capacity of how the panamanian government works that if you can go to the to the, the big market we call it the red roof market and buy you know uh, uh, tomatoes bananas and you know a, 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 a trinket that you should be able to also go to the tuesday market the tuesday market excuse me <laughs> and and that would fall under the same category yeah, that's of a, true of a block four yeah. They will not more this weekend, so maybe you want to have us back next week. Could be. Could be. We'll have another Could day. Be. Yeah. We'll know more after this weekend. Okay, that'd, so. that'd, that'd be great. Going back a little bit and touching on the idea of the, the Gringo market. Tap out now that we kind of have control of the whole building. We have a different vision for the whole building. And that space over the last, oh, 10 years or so has really been known in the Panamanian community as a Gringo space. And we're trying to get out of that. Yeah. So I'm glad you guys decided not to go with the name, the Gringo Market. I like V Tuesday Market is much better. Well, I know you got you and Chris, and, and and you know for a large part Austin, but mostly you and Chris have yep. really been trying to integrate our community. And you true, and I talked true. about that. I've talked about that extensively. Yeah. With Chris, that the goal is to to have it a more inclusive. Um, area especially that spot yeah with all the Panamanian families that walk across the bridge it's really important that that space be more welcoming to everybody and, and really the truth is right now it's not seen that way yeah. so well it's you know some interesting things coming it's a, that that's that's a cultural paradigm that is not going to happen overnight true you know true. But, but with what with, with you you guys have been doing trying to get everything over there um, a little more inclusive Hopefully, by the time everything gets opened up, with Facebook posts and other marketing ideas, you know, well, the Panamanian community will realize that that's their space too. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, I interrupted. Go ahead. No, I think I was done. Is, is it true that you tried to get Chris for this, and he was he was all booked up, and you had to? Yeah, well, he had, he had contacted me the other day. That I was in me. second place, and no, no, you guys were always in first place because D had oh, sent me a. Text no, I know her, her but I, but I, I just heard you would. He I preferred he, to have Chris, and he was all booked up. Oh, no, no, no. no. Is that not like true? You better than Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Send the check to, no, but yeah. uh, no, he had mentioned yesterday that if he had some time this morning, yeah. he'd... Uh, well, the helicopter flew over. I thought, that, I, I thought maybe that was him. Might, might be. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's big that. time now on YouTube. Yeah. And, so. That's right, the famous chef, the world famous yeah, chef. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we have a spot for you, Chris. If, if you're out there listening, we have an empty chair. <laughs> Uh, and uh, a microphone set up for you, so if you if you want to cruise by at any time, you know, come on out, buddy. Come on out, man. Yes, D. So, uh, if you are a vendor, um, you should have received our email um, asking if you wanted to join with us, and if you are interested in becoming part of the market. The one issue we do have is space because we. Um, 
are going to have less tables available because of the spacing. We'll probably have less vendors, and those vendors that have been involved with the market and wish to return will have first priority. Sure, sure. But we're welcoming the community, Panamanians. If you have a if you're a cook with your with your health certificate, if you'd like to sell your food, or if you have a a um, thing that you something that you make and you want to sell then you can contact um, me um, my phone number is um, six 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 seven two six seven one that's on Facebook um, excuse me on whatsapp and you can send me a message and let me know if what you if you're interested in joining the market and as usual uh, probably tomorrow when I post my post show promo I will have all that information so make sure you get me that whatever right. you want me to put on there it'll get out to 20 to 30 thousand people okay I'll just repeat the number one more time yeah. my name is D Horn and my whatsapp is six 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 seven two six seven one now you you mentioned uh, in passing and I, I wanted to uh, to come back to the the health certificate and I know that that has been an issue uh, here and there over the years, um, obviously, and that's not a dig or anything, but it has come up from time to time. So now that Minsa is going to have uh, more of a hands-on approach to the reopening of the blocks and everything, um, how, how is that going to affect some of the vendors? Are you only going to allow vendors in there that have the... the uh, they will only be allowed if they have a health certificate. It must be laminated on, on the table in this full display. So, okay. so in case somebody comes by and wants to see it, it's available. They have to prove they have it or they're not going to be allowed to sell their food. Well, yeah, that's, that's also, a, you know, that's also a, gives the, the buyer a sense of security, you know, knowing that you're, you're, especially, you know, food products. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're, okay, this is someone who has been approved and has obviously gone through an inspection process, and their food is relatively safe. So that's, uh, that's kind of, to me, as a consumer, that's, that's kind of a big deal, you know, having that. So kudos to you guys. You know, as a consumer, back touching on something that Dee said about competition you know through friendly competition advancements are made sure so really the end user the consumer will benefit if there is a little friendly competition 100 percent. So, yeah. so we plan on making i'm sorry you guys i think plan on making the tuesday market better improved and that really forces everybody in that space to improve uh their market well sure Plus and, to remain and the consumer benefits they, in the end so they, if they want to stay there too they need to make sure that all of their Stuff's in order. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, D, um, I did want to ask you now, the way the market was set up, I remember I've been there many, many times because um, you spoke earlier to the, to the crowding problem. You know, here's an open spot, let's shove a table in there. Um, when you have everything set up, is it going to be, say, the, the, the food items or the vegetables are going to be in this location? The, 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 uh, non-food items are going to be here, the artisans are going to be here. You're going to have it set up in some sort of a, of a of an order? No, we were thinking we want it more like a French market, that you wander through and you can stop and pick up a loaf of bread and next to them is maybe some cheese and next to them is maybe somebody that uh, makes uh, quilts and next to them is somebody that makes jewelry. We want it to be a free flow so that people don't just it's kind of like having the milk at the back of the market <laughs> yeah. we don't, if we have all the veggies in one section all, all of the food made ahead of time people will could just come right in and get that and leave but if you have to saunter through things to go get to your favorite things you may catch your eye your eye might be caught by a pair of earrings and you go oh it's my mom's birthday i need to get something i heard a rumor that there's a really really you know top line jewelry <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of top line jewelers <laughs> in, in you being market. one of them well thank you very much but i, I we we really want a whole new new vibe that we don't want to separate people out we will put people in the hex room that have more fragile items sure because of the wind, wind that yeah. can come along. But we never get that here. <laughs> <laughs> but we not would, today. Not today. Beautiful, it's beautiful day. day. 
but we will go ahead and have people mixed together. So kind of like it was before. We kind of had it that way before, but we're going to, like I said, uh, Sylvette Day, one of our board members, came up and said, let's let's have a French market, because she's French, yeah. and I said, yeah. As one does. We want to have an international vibe. Like I said, people from all over the world are welcome in our market. It's not just a gringo market. Isn't it nice to have autonomy and be able to oh, make these changes these and decisions make a suggestion and actually see it we through? We actually are asking people their opinion and listening to people because it's the Vendors Market Association. Oh. It's the vendors making the decision of where things are it's it's our voice we will not be silenced because for fear that we would be thrown out of the market if we said anything negative i understand that and you know that actually that actually sounds like it would work better for everybody you know like i said i'm not a vendor i i've, I've done flea markets in the past you know and, and i've, I've I've, uh, I've sold pretty much everything in flea markets, and I remember uh, some of those markets were geared towards, hey, you know, what do you have, what do you want to be, what size do you want, and I have had others that say, oh, hi, here, we're going to put you over here in a tiny spot, and I'm like, I have no room for my stuff, especially when I was selling computer stuff. You try setting up, you know, 15 computer systems in a 4 by 8 space, you can't do it. So the vendors having that level of input uh, is, is actually going to make it a better market. It will be, and because of that, you'll have happy vendors, and happy vendors make a happy market. <laughs> happy vendors. Maybe that's the happy vendor market. There you go. Yeah. There you go. You know, something else I think uh, is important to touch on is the the parking. Yes. The parking is always a problem. It's always been a problem. We are working to possibly open up the Boulder 54 parking lot as right. extra space for the vendors. So if there are 30 vendors, that's 30 cars that won't be occupying the uh, tap out parking lot. So uh, small little things. Also, we've toyed around with the idea, should distancing be necessary using some of the area Boulder 54 for um, extra tables? maybe along that beautiful walkway going back to the gazebo of Boulder 54. Well, so yeah, that's we have a big about a big property on which to expand should it be necessary. So and that's one of the things I wanted to ask you about because I know that uh, you know, those two properties are connected and obviously they're connected in more ways than just geographically. True. And uh, you know those grounds are, are, are gorgeous. Yeah and most people don't know they're there. Yeah. That's the thing. I, I had you know it's funny because I've been here for years now and, and I've played music at, at both those locations, uh -huh. and was only recently when the ACCB did, uh, uh, Chris and Richard did some kind of a wing football. Uh -huh. that, I, that I was like, wow, okay, I didn't even know that there was access from one to the other. I thought you had to just walk around oh, yeah, the block. No. So, it's no, beautiful no, little no. pavers yeah, and. No, those grounds are gorgeous, man. Lighting, a little lake back there. It's very nice. Yeah, you could put the beautiful back there. So we have room to expand. You have room to expand. And that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And you know, the interesting thing about it is that uh, when, I, when I first came here, I've been here about two and a half years, uh, the very first thing that, that was brought to my attention was the Tuesday market. Because I had asked, well, you know, where can I find blah, blah, blah. You know, when you're new in town, you get on the Facebook pages and where can I find blah. And everyone had directed me to, you know, the Tuesday market. This is where you can get things that you might not be able to find. Finding spinach here sometimes is like, you know, digging a, a mine. But there's always someone there that has spinach or, or, or prepackaged, really good prepackaged food. And uh, when I started going down to the market, I found it to be a place where not only were I able to find the, the odd things that, that, you know, that I like, but I started making friends with, with vendors. I started seeing people that I know that I met at the, uh, the, the Meet Boquete Newcomers Group. Well, I'm starting to see these people in the market now, and I've developed, I've developed some very, very special friendships over the past couple of years from that community, you know, that, that community gathering type of a thing. And that's the reason why I came here 10 years ago for that market specifically, and there was nothing online, there was no Boquete news, there was nothing. Yeah. And I just happened to see a blog 
and saw that there was this market and I said I'm gonna go on that day and I did meet someone that assisted me on getting to move here and to me that's why the market is so important is so that we can gather and new people can meet the people that have been here for a while and can ask questions and that's why we want to have areas so people can sit aside and relax and chat and not feel that urge to run away where they can sit and listen to some music mm -hmm. and I said enjoy the food that they have purchased and and it's it's going to be a party yeah. and we want that party atmosphere but I, you know, I'm glad you brought up parking mm -hmm. uh, I mean the, that that uh, tap out has got already very great. I mean, it's that's probably like, probably thirty cars. I yeah, think. that's you can fit. Well, probably more than that because you got ten. I've seen. I've seen more than thirty. It's yeah. just not advisable. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a lot of SUVs and Helix. Yeah, around, that's. So, you know, you yeah. Can't really, I remember going in there when I had that little Kia Picanto. <laughs> it's like I can't find my car. There it is. It's behind two Helixes and a, and a CRV. <laughs> But no, that actually is uh, the, the two locations, Boulder and and uh, Tap Out, have yeah. some of the best parking in town. This is true. This is true. Um, and and I, and I have to. Are you going to have the the same type of a? Because when I pull in, there, there's always somebody directing, and that really is helpful. Yes, we will continue that. And and also, there's parking around back too if you have a handicap. Exactly for right. handicap mm -hmm. only. For handicap and that's only. where the vendors come to unload their. Um, their boxes and things and that's what's so convenient to having the market at tap out is that specifically because we all take turns coming in unloading our boxes mm -hmm. and we then go park mm -hmm. and I, I I guess Pierrot was talking about how difficult it was doing it at the um, feria because he did a dog show there and he said mm -hmm. it was quite it was quite a, a feat to be able to get things unloaded so yes. for our vendors they can on the morning they can pull into the big parking lot unload and they always yeah. move away so we want parking spaces for our customers yeah. they're not allowed to park in the parking lot because we want room for people to come and to shop. Okay, so when the vendors come, they load, they, they park elsewhere? Yes. They probably probably at Boulder. Probably, probably, probably at Boulder. Boulder. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, the, 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 the spot, parking at, the, at the, fer the feria, I have found that if you can get there early enough, you can get a decent spot several times, though, during... One of the, like, the four spots. Yeah, one of the four or five the, spots. Where the road's not road. falling like, off. Like, when, the, the, uh, when they had the health fair yeah. there, or they had Oktoberfest. Uh, I ended up parking you know, halfway down towards the uh, the new Pine Monte Bridge. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I I do know that that is a big deal for a lot of people. You know, right. can I just drive in, park somewhere down in my car, walk down the stairs? By the way, in case you're not you're not aware, um, if you have difficulty with stairs, right before the stairs going down to tap out. If you make a quick right, there's a ramp. There's a ramp that comes all the way around right. and gets you down to the ground level. I've had to use that a time or two, <laughs> carrying speakers. Oh, okay. I thought you meant after. <laughs> <laughs> after being a tap out for three Just give me a pillow and leave me where I am. <laughs> but no, that's really handy to have because me carrying a heavy object down the stairs will end one way. Yeah. Yeah. And, Not good. And, and me and what I'm carrying will end up broken. So. Uh, but I know you know this. This is a retirement community. And there are people here that have you know balance issues and whatnot. So between the handicapped parking and that ramp, the area is extremely accessible. Very accessible. Thank you for bringing that up because well, we do want people to know that we do have accessibility to our market. Yeah. All right. Now um, we we got some time left. We got about about twenty minutes or so. Um, now you you brought uh, you brought some things that you wanted to talk. I don't know if you've covered that. You've already covered that already. Okay, Justin. Um, the way that that tap out is, is set up, uh, I know that pre previously the 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 main area, the entrance area, has been changed a couple of times, and there are some things that were available there that I don't know. Let me know if they're or let us know if they're going to be still available there or at the other market one of them is the the, the gringo express mail service is that something that you're going to be doing or, or adding to this could be done in both places i know that uh, we were contacted by the people that uh, operated the okay. former market, the, former market right? yeah. the tuesday market and they asked to use the tap out parking lot for 
for the time being to uh, get the to get yeah. the mail out and of course we said no problem so yeah. i think for now they're going to continue with that service and, and we've given them access to the top out parking Good. Line. yeah see this is this, what the plan this is how communities work together right this yeah. this, this is this is what it doesn't it really have to be us versus them i think there's yeah. there's room for everybody and yeah. well you know several people you know when you had initially posted you know uh, the rebirth post on oh, facebook that was that was the other market that was the other market yes you are correct i'm sorry about that uh, this is the comments that have come up on both posts we're we're asking you know specific questions but there's been a lot of positive feedback on both i was surprised but yeah both the posts from the other market and both you know and, and from yours about hey this is fantastic this is a tuesday's market day exactly, exactly. You know? we're just getting more sophisticated we're getting bigger in in our little town in order to be able to support those markets well you know it's really nice because when you know when that first when the, when the the posts started coming out my first thought was you know uh, the the michael jackson Here eating popcorn meme, you know? <laughs> uh oh there's going to be this is this is you i think you know what there it's about are to some go. people out there that are really wanting to stir the pot Blood versus Chris. Yeah. Blood versus that's Chris. Right. i'm not letting that well but the go community away. won't let that happen either because no. the, the feedback from the community has been largely positive nobody has said anything about oh this is going to be terrible it's going to be a cat fight it's been like this is great you know we, we now we have more places to go nobody has said to my knowledge uh, oh well we'll never go to that place so we're never going to go to that place because everyone's like great it's more places to spend my money absolutely and that's why we want a very positive atmosphere about this we do not think of this as us versus them we think of it as a community marketplace and people said well why can't you have it on a different day well, a lot of reasons is because most of us only want to do it once a week. It is a lot of work. Yeah. It takes me an hour and a half to set up my table and an hour and a half to tear down. I have to pay for that table. If I don't sell anything and make any money, you're, yeah, you're, it, you're, it's, you're paying to be there. I'm paying to be yeah. there. So. I have no no desire, and then that's pretty much the feelings of a lot of the vendors is they don't want to do it more than one time a week. Yeah, and a lot of consumers have said the same thing. Yeah, yeah. they don't want to come into town twice well, a that's week. That's the day. Tuesday is the market day. Right. It's always been always the market day. Exactly. How would you pick which day you want to go? Oh, uh, which which market has the spinach? Which market has? It doesn't matter if we're all open and you can just cross the street and go to each market and pick out what you want now if if you have a vendor um you know that say ha has a a store in town a brick and mortar just an actual store mm -hmm. and they wanted a table at the the uh the, the other market right and a table at the tuesday market is that something you'd be absolutely to fine we have no problems with that whatsoever and we have people that aren't brick and mortar that would like to have a table at both and well, yeah. we welcome that there's no like i said there's no competition if they want they feel that one market has more business than the other and if they want to stay with one versus the other that's their choice it doesn't matter to us we if we have the space available we will provide it but again we're going to have a lot less spaces available so our vendors it's pretty much going to be a lot of the previous yeah. vendors that have shown us they're strong they stay with us all year long in august september when there's no tourists when we don't have as many customers those are the people we want to support and i'm one of those people and i want to have those people with working with me that i know they're going to support me all year long versus sure. people that come in at christmas time and want a table when it's the best season uh -huh. and you know that that's going to be a little bit harder for us because we're we may not be able to bring in those people that's why that market across the street maybe they'll be able to have provide okay, spaces yeah. for people on the fly that want to come in and sell something they'll have a space available and our market will be pretty much those set vendors that you've been working with all these years so that you will just come and buy the things you need that you know 
and then maybe you want to check out what's what's happening on the other side. Well, are you now? This this is just an off the cuff question because I'm thinking, okay, walking down the stairs. Is there going to be any kind of either on Facebook or on a leaderboard somewhere a list of, of, of who's at the market today? Um, that's a very good question. Um, we are going to be announcing the vendors once we're close to knowing okay. who is go uh, when we're going to be open. Because we all have our favorites. Right, exactly. And there, I think that's a really great idea. We are going to have a Facebook page for the mar the Tuesday market, and it will list who the vendors are. Cool. And that's a great idea. And if we if we start finding like maybe at um when we have spaces available we can let people know that we have new vendors that have come on board and they can know who they are but pretty much it's like i said it's going to be those people that you've been seeing for the past years that you really like their food their veggies their jewelry their sewing whatever they have those people that you come for the market to see every week they're going to be there. Now, Justin, I want, and that's very good to hear because, like I said, we all have our favorites. That's right? Definitely. I, I can think of I one right mine. now that I might drive up to San Francisco and visit him personally to bring some baked goods. Oh. <laughs> anyway, um, Justin, is, is Tap Out going to be, uh, I don't want to say open for business, but is there going to be uh, anything on your end over there, like uh, yeah. wings or sodas or whatever? Um, you know, we've served some breakfast items in the past, yeah. and kind of keeping with the, the the idea that they have about having open space. We I, we'll probably have some some breakfast items, some coffee, some good food to serve where people can get it at the bar and then take it out to the bar. Because yeah. so I, I know that there you can buy pre-made food there. I'm just thinking we'll like, have a presence. So like sure. if I go, you know, I might want to you know get something if I'm not shopping for food. All right, let me go in there and get what I want. Hey, go croissant, up, get a croissant, a couple, of, and then wander down to the to the uh, sitting the area, listen to some music, eat my eat my breakfast, and that's the and chit chat with uh, you know with with my neighbors. Yeah. That's, that's the, the idea. idea. That's yeah, the idea. I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, and uh, the, the we're excited. It's gonna be it's gonna be different. It's gonna be new and improved, and it's it's exciting. I just hope we can open up soon. Yeah. And there's yeah. the waiting is. Uh, Getting old. The waiting is the hardest old. part. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some philosopher said that, named Tom Petty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and as far as the music goes, um, we, we wanted to clarify that, you know, as much as we like our our nighttime entertainment, uh, it's not going to be, a, you know, a rock band or, well, or anything like that. It's just a couple of acoustic musicians up there softly playing yeah some maybe uh, yeah. it's just somebody that has moved here recently or is just a musician that they want to be able to play that they maybe at home they do it but they want to share their music with us yeah. um, we just want people to come and hear some something softly in the background that people can come and look and watch them play yeah. but we want our, our we want customers to stay. To, yeah to stay yeah, we but we stay. want to be able to hear what people are saying sure, yeah we don't want to be going what what, what? you know well and, uh, and as far as, as as you've explained earlier before the show this is totally voluntary it's voluntary and, uh, so this is not a paid gig i'm a musician you all know me i've been playing music <laughs> all over this town for years this is not a paid gig if you want to volunteer though and be part of the community yes and and you know uh, i love playing i'll probably end up hauling my amp and harps up the harmonicas up there with roger and uh um it's exposure maybe you maybe you do have two people or three people that can do an acoustic set and maybe people will say hey i'd like to hire you for my party or well, and, well, and one of the reasons i wanted to make sure everyone knew it was voluntary is that there's going to be some sort of a of a of a, a tip, tip jar, jar up yes. there. Oh, yeah. so oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> it, it, and as a musician that's always appreciated me and, and the various bands i have been in have done a lot of benefits we've done a lot of benefit shows in this town for various organizations that we did not receive compensation for because that's the agreement that we made we wanted to support this right but we really appreciated you know over the course of the evening that 50 60 dollars that was thrown in there you know uh, you know it pays for our lunch you know right. um 
So don't forget to tip your, your waitress, waiters, and, <laughs> and, and, your, and your musicians. And your musicians. <laughs> but we do want people, if you are interested in uh, doing a gig with us, you have my number. I'll repeat it one more time. It's my again. My name is D Horn. It's six 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 seven two six seven one on my WhatsApp, and we'd love to hear from you if you would like to join into our community jam session. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And and I didn't. Meet, I have not yet seen that dance floor, Justin, because uh, the last time I was there, um, it was uh, one of Mike's uh, DJ Mike Weber. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He yeah. had one of his shows there. I was there with my with Day and. I know Patrick uh, was out there taking all of his pictures and video. We had a great time. It was fantastic. It was two days before. It wasn't in yet. Is that right? No, it wasn't in yet. Um, it was probably marked off. The yeah, it was. It was remote. there was the stakes and then yeah. all that. And uh, I remember the first thing that uh, I think it was, I think Chris was there. I don't know. So one of the, one of the employees there made sure that I was aware of the two big holes in front <laughs> of the stage. Because uh, I know that you were getting ready to do that. I had not had the opportunity to yeah. see that yet. And I talked to my wife. It's going to change things. Oh, no, yeah. When we're allowed to open, because I know how you guys like to dance. I don't. Oh, yeah. Well, but I know how some of you do. And uh, before, you know, you're dancing in the grass. If it had been raining, it's muddy. Yeah. People try to dance up by the restaurant. But there's nothing really comparable to being in front of the stage. Yeah, no, no. It's, it's a lot of fun. So it's and, you know, be, and, and speaking, it's going to be cool. Speaking as a as a musician, I know that when when you open up again, you're going to be resuming your your uh, enter evening entertainment. We're going to ramp it up, and that is going to be great for you know. Speaking as a musician, it's a really really great feeling to be up there playing music and seeing a crowded dance floor. Yeah, that's that's uh, that just makes us want to play better, you know. But when you don't have anyone there because of the rain, the yeah. mud, or whatever, or they're and, clear up here, you know, yeah, and that's a great spot. You know, to play music in over there. If you haven't been over to Tap Out, well, you need to get out from under your rock when they open up exactly. and go down there. Uh, it, the, the way it's set up is it's it's you can access everything from outside, from inside, and uh, that area, that community area down there with the benches and the big giant Jenga. You're still going to keep oh, that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, we still have that. They, they got a little it's basketball there, court little out there that, yeah. and 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 a <laughs> fire pit. The fire pit. The fire, and we just put in some artificial turf. Oh. So I don't think you saw that either. No. So it's only about half done. So, but when it's done, when we're able to open up yeah. and it's not half turf, but the turf oh. goes all the way around the fire pit, it's, uh, it's going to be nice. Cool. Be nice. If you have a fire pit, you should consider m marshmallows. That is so fun. Well, you know. Yeah. I think, the, I think we've the, tried. The, I think the, the rock, rock does that. The rock, the rock does, does that, that, and I, you know, there's no reason why, you I, know, I, there's not a competition. We've done that at Big Daddy's. We've done that at Big Daddy's. Oh, yeah, okay. In the back. It's fun. It is. Yeah, the kids like it. Everybody loves a roasted kids. marshmallow. Oh, and a balloon. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, that's, look, it's, it's, you know, this last four months have been, you know, trying for a lot of us, you know, they're, they're, we haven't been able to go to our favorite places. We haven't been able to see our friends. We haven't really been able to do much of anything. And I know everyone's kind of chomping at the bit to get out there. And the businesses have been have been obviously affected oh, a man. lot, Unbelievable. Uh, you know, Unbelievable. by this. So we're we're really all of us, the whole community, whether you're a merchant, a vendor, a a, a, a business owner, or a consumer, we're all looking, you know, to get to get back to what we we know that there's going to be a new normal. Now, there's going to be social distancing or physical distancing if you are averse to the term social distancing, as some of you are. <laughs> uh, but there's going to be spacing requirements, and there are things that are going to be part of our everyday life. But, you know, we're all anxious to, to not just to get out and to, to, you know, patronize our favorite places, but we also want, as consumers and as members of this community, we want to see our um, uh, businesses prosper. <laughs> right. And I've already been getting uh, messages uh, from uh, the public saying they're listening to the show and they're looking forward to us opening. They love our ideas and our plan and they think two markets on the same day is a great idea. Yeah. And our hours are going to be from 9 to 1. Nine so to we one. are expanding the time a little bit because there are people that come at lunchtime from the businesses around mm -hmm. town and sure. or they just get into town at that point and they look around everybody's already gone. I mean, it's going to be up to the vendors how long they want to stay but we were not allowed to stay that late before so now because Tap Out has generously allowed us to have a little extra time at the market 
we will be open an hour later. Yeah. And you know, that's interesting about about the uh, the competition thing. You know, it, it's how many restaurants are in uh, Boquete? What, 135 in the whole district? Over like 70. There's like, believe there's, there's all the fondas and everything else. You know, 80 restaurants. And, and nobody looks at it, well, you know, we're not going to eat there because, you know, we. The restaurants and in, in, in general uh, businesses in town uh, thrive on that, on that company. It's a free market. You it's know, good for the consumer. It's, 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 it's good for everybody, you know. So, and if you've got. A, a superior product or if you have a better service or if you have a better reputation or if you have anything that sets you apart that is not a dig against someone who might be a competitor of yours you're entitled every all of us here that that are, are in business in town have the opportunity to make our uh, what we offer uh, better than, than it is so if you go ahead and do that and you offer a better service and you offer a uh, a more convenient location or you offer you know a, a more opportunity the market is going to dictate whether or not you are successful so when I when I look and I see and I listen and I talk and, and I ask questions um, and, and the responses I get uh, the dance floor the, you know mm -hmm. the, the, the spacing the, the, the French market I didn't, I didn't even know that was a thing I learned that I was today years old <laughs> <laughs> I learned there was such a thing as a French market. Yes, when I was in Paris, um, it was really fun going to the local market. And I, like I said, there's uh, the pate people and the bread and the veggies. And then slipped in between there is a jeweler and somebody that sells plants. And it's, it's, it's the way to go. It allows you to, it's like a eye candy. It mm. allows you to see all different colors and shapes and forms versus just seeing yeah. veggies and just seeing meat and just seeing jewelry. Yeah, so you walk through and you go, shiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, well, we're all looking, we're all, we've got, well, we've got about five minutes left. Um, and uh, what I would like to do is, as I, as I've mentioned and as I do every week, uh, D's phone number, all the information is going to be uh, posted on, on the usual places on social media, so you'll have all that. But in these last few minutes, is there anything specific you wanted to repeat? Is there anything that you wanted to make sure got out there before we close the show? I don't know. I think uh, we pretty much have have gotten the information out there we're gonna come back and repeat this in the future because mm -hmm. maybe not everybody could hear this actual show we're going to be talking with uh, Cynthia in the mm -hmm. future because uh, we, we want to get the message out there because I know there was a lot of confusion and we we don't want people to be confused we want people to be up to date and know what's going on and we will provide we will have a website that will have our vendors on it once we have that information we can't provide that because we don't know how much space at this point we're gonna we have to figure out where all the tables are going and who can go where and things like that so until we have all that information we're not just gonna put throw names out there and yeah. get people all excited and, and we're still not sure when you know when things are going to open up exactly I know Justin mentioned earlier that you'll find out over the weekend whether it's going to be a block four block six thing um, or block two thing um, which is the way the other market was so we'll be looking for that information as well and uh, we, we understand uh, as much as we can understand anything coming out of, of uh, <laughs> Out of Panama City, Mixed messaging that, maybe a little bit. That yeah, right, a little bit. That um, the, the new uh, health minister is considering opening up areas according to how yeah, how yeah. severe or how serious. And we're we're great here. We're doing fantastic here. So hopefully, uh, you know, we'll be one of those one of those provinces or at least districts, you know, that will be given the go ahead earlier. Yeah, we're, we're all we all definitely want to get out there. Yeah. Um, and I know the mayor, the mayor of Boquete, although he's very cautious on the virus coming from outside in. Yeah. I know he's eager to get the economy rolling. Again, well, sure so. he is. I mean, you know, I mean, that's, you can't blame him for that. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was, he, he, 
and I don't mean this in, in a negative way, but he's a politician. And, you know, the politicians make, you know, promises. And, and I believe, on, at least on a local level, a lot of them really want to keep those. Yeah. You know, I mean, Hasawar is out in the community. He doesn't sit behind his desk and type. You know, he's out. He's visiting different areas. He's involved with the, with the farms. He's involved with the agriculture. He's involved with the restaurants. So I think that's also a positive, you know, that we have a mayor right now who is really, really wants to protect us, right, but also wants to protect his, his um, you know, his economy. Yeah. And that's very important. Uh, we're down to about uh, two minutes. Uh, before we go, I wanted to let everybody know two things. One, uh, reiterate, this is not a nasty competition. Not at all. This is, uh, everyone's going to work together and there's room enough for everybody. Of course. And uh, having a, having it on Tuesday is going to be the market day. The market day. And uh, and tap out has got some really really fantastic things that now some I'm going to have to park my car and go peek over the fence there because I know I got to go see what. <laughs> Look at the done. dance floor from the bridge. You can see. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah I'm going to do that. Uh, but they got putting in the dance floor, uh, 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 the fire pit, the. the is it is it artificial grass or it's a it's astro artificial? Yes, yeah, yeah, don't go astro turf. Astro turf. Yeah, astro that's got turf. a real negative kind of. <laughs> okay. Artificial it's turf. Nice. Um, so we've got a lot of good things coming down. Um, uh, I understand that uh, you guys are still del are delivering through Go Goose. At yeah, through Go Goose and Tap Out is actually we have not been available uh, food from Tap Out for delivery, but uh, we're working on that. It should be coming out soon. Uh, Chris is working hard. I think yesterday we opened up Boulder. For delivery yeah. and had, I, th I think he was working late yeah. last night. Trying well, to get all yeah, the, he sent me a text last out, night. So. He says, "Don't forget to announce tomorrow, today, that Boulder 54 will be open to live for delivery starting Wednesday. This coming Wednesday, uh, phone number six three six six nine nine seven seven. I will put that in uh, in that uh, my post. Boulder 54 is back for delivery only, though. It's delivery only it's through Go Goose, okay, and." Uh, and it's free delivery, by the way. And it's free delivery. Before we go, I want to give uh, Roger, who's here, he owns the station, and uh, he's got something he wants to share with us. Well, I just wanted to mention that tomorrow is 4th of July. Yeah! You haven't mentioned anything. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so, what well, about it? <laughs> okay, well, well uh, you know, I don't know what's going on. So, uh, throw a sparkle on it. We all know that, you know, it's an important holiday for those of us who are from uh, Estados Unidos. Um, so, we celebrated in our own way but yes we should Roger thank you I should know that <laughs> voice of America news <laughs> so tomorrow uh, happy Independence Day to, uh, to everybody to yeah. everyone who celebrates it absolutely all right we're about the end of our show now I wanted to uh, thank I want to thank Dee and Justin for coming and sharing with us uh, all the great things that are in store for our community when we're allowed to be a community again uh, you've been listening to Boquete Now Talk Radio on Radio Cherokee 103.3 FM, sponsored by Big Daddy's Grill, Boulder 54, and the Tap Out Sports Zone, future home of the Tuesday Market. All right, thank you, everybody. I hope you have a great day. Pause and I will see you, talk to you next week.